So here's a some kind of spontaneous reflection on insight as if it really exists but still let's entertain it yes it's the middle of the night actually it's 2.30 in the morning as I awoke it was being entertained by metaphors and stories stimulated by a Facebook post on the nature of the self the seemingly the self and what arose um, was a couple of uh, metaphors one was being in front of a door big door I'm searching in my pocket for the right key I'm desperately trying to get that key in the lock you know and every time I put it in it it doesn't quite fit it kind of almost fits I think it's going to you know turn the lock but it doesn't so I keep fumbling with new keys yeah so it's one this huge door and the other metaphor is um, something someone said to me many years ago if you're on the wrong train every stop is the wrong stop <laughs> I really love that every stop is the wrong stop I love it something around yes I don't really know I don't even know I'm on the wrong train and I'm trying to work out desperately which stop is what where am I yeah it's it's, it's somewhat akin to this whole business of is there a self or isn't there a self and as Donald Trump might say I don't know where he's come from it's, it's a hoax it's a hoax it's a spiritual hoax yeah it's as if Mr. Thinky or Mrs. Thinky or that presupposed self is desperately trying to get out of itself so it's searching for those keys and it sees the door in front of it and surely if it gets the right key if it fits it'll, the door will open and lo and behold freedom or it's in this train and it's just not it's scratching its head and it's going well surely this is what's this stop then a debate on the, the different stations and the meaning of them and the right one to get off of course that train's never going to stop and there are as many stations as there are sounds in the Ganges and in a way Mr Thinky doesn't want to get off and it really doesn't want to find the right key it's very addicted to itself actually it is indeed a very, very sealed system. Very closed. And it, it's a closed loop. It's a spiritual hoax. Yeah. And as I say that, there's a sigh. Kind of, well, at least in, in this body, there's a resonant truth around that. And as it speaks, it knows, having said that, that the words themselves are not coming from a source. They're just coming, as it were, into this freshness from whoever knows where perhaps it never left the station and perhaps is really going nowhere and perhaps as it looks at this door in front of it and steps back it will see the door jam that surrounds it is not attached to anything There's infinite space and beauty around that door. There's no need to even go through it. Yeah, so it implies when we engage with this existential dilemma, we're very keen to follow the finger that points to the moon. But we're not very keen to check back from the source of where that finger is pointing and for me that is the delusion there's a contradiction there there's an existential contradiction that seemingly doesn't want to resolve itself 
because if it did, it would have to give up, it would have to surrender, it would have to, to admit it never left the station. Because how can something that is empty of itself, if that indeed is the case, point anywhere or understand if there is or isn't a self? It forces itself, as it were, in this moment. To just rest in itself. It's game, set and match. There isn't the noble quest at this point. There's nothing to be done. It's already done itself. So to kind of... Yeah, it's the heist. <laughs> the police have turned up to arrest the driver. And in a way, they're arresting the car. The driver's got away once again. Mr. and Mrs. Thinky does not want to surrender at all. They're not at all interested. Yeah, it's like that. So the invitation, I guess when the Buddha invited and entertaining from the sensory perspective in the scene, etc. Only the scene. It was an invitation to let that rest in itself. And perhaps it's just too simple for this mind, this thinking mind in this particular culture has extreme issues. It's trapped in itself, of course, but it never left the station. It already uh, is not actually confined. There's no confinement. We don't need the key and we don't need to guess which station we're in. Anyway, that's offered with some play and humour for there to be an entertaining of where the finger is pointing from, not what it's pointing to. We're very good at that. But the presupposition that there's something actually pointing is the issue. And once something gets that, so to speak, the more that rests in itself, it doesn't need to do any more.